everybody, welcome back to Universe Sandbox. So today we're gonna try to terraform Mars by dropping an ocean on it. And if that goes well, we're gonna try to do the same thing with the moon and Venus. Okay, let's get right into it. Okay, so here's Mars. We're gonna slow down time a little bit. So you can see there's Valles Marineris right there, this little crater. So I think I kinda wanna launch the water right into this canyon because that will fill up. It's like an actual canyon that's, uh, I think Universe Sandbox has the depth for it too. So, oh, and there's, that's Olympus Mons right here. This is the biggest mountain, unrelated. Okay, so what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna, how big is Mars compared to Earth? Let's see. The radius is half of Earth. So, theoretically, if we put half of the ocean into Mars, it will fill it up the same as our planet, right? Okay, so to test that, we're gonna go to asteroids. We're gonna start with a random asteroid and then launch it into Mars, like that. But before it goes into Mars, we're going to go to the composition of it and make it 100% water. So this is like ice now. And then if we make it big enough, it should turn into a ball of water. Let's set the mass so we can actually set it to the Earth's ocean mass. So if we do one, that is the mass of one ocean. I kind of want it to be a ball of water. Okay, there we go. So now it's a ball of water. So if we set it to one Earth's ocean mass, it's going to be that big. But since Mars is only half the size of Earth, let's do half of an ocean mass. Okay, perfect. We should be able to just let this fly into Mars and see how well it fills it up. Okay, here we go. So it looks like a lot of the water is sort of evaporating off into fragments. Okay, but here it comes on Mars's surface. I don't know what that is. It looks weird. I think it's water vapor or just like little particles of water. Okay, here it comes. Boom, okay, collision. You can see the water starts to spread out and there's a lot of fragments that come out. I wonder what these fragments are made of. Pause the time. These are made of silicate. So it's shooting off chunks of Mars surface. So now we're going to see over time how well this covers the surface. So that would be not good for life on there. So it looks like this is ice already starting to spread and the water needs to cool down a little bit more. So it looks like we have ice on one side and fire on the other. Speed it up a little bit. Okay, so it looks like it's cooled down mostly. I'm going to check its life likelihood now. We did it. Okay, so Mars has a life likelihood of 0 0.427 when it was zero before. So just adding this water was enough to give it a boost where it could have very small like bacterial life. So to get it a little bit higher, we're going to want the temperature higher and we want a thicker atmosphere. So the temperature thing, I'm thinking we just move it between Earth and Venus. Let's grab our move tool. What if we just move it right here and then set it to auto orbit? So Mars is now between Venus and Earth and that orbit looks decent. Let's take a look at it. This water is definitely gonna freeze over time. So to give it an atmosphere, there's actually no way to without actually just changing its settings. So we're gonna give it a little bit of an atmosphere. We'll give it like half of Earth's atmosphere because it's like half the size. 0.5 Earth. Okay, so you can see that redness starts to really shine in its atmosphere and we can start to see some clouds. Okay, I'm gonna settle the water on the surface. Settle water. And it looks like it's completely covered in water. So we had enough to completely cover it. Oh, there's a little, little island. So this is actually probably the best for life of all the options atmosphere clouds so this is what we're left with we're kind of left with these smaller islands and the rest is just water which is pretty cool actually so now let's check its life likelihood so this atmosphere and clouds are still here okay so now we got it up to a solid 42.1 percent wow okay mars is definitely habitable now i think we could get it a little bit more it's still really hot where that water asteroid came in so if we set its average temperature to like 14 celsius uh so it kind of just like is not super hot at that one spot let's see what it's at now 47.3 okay that's mars so that is a habitable mars that is crazy and let's actually turn the vegetation on and see what that looks like let's turn off the clouds boom there we go okay Mars is looking awesome and it still has like that Mars flavor because of the red atmosphere I would say like that's beautiful so moving it closer to the Sun definitely would help too with its um, how much lights getting on it and such so that worked beautifully so let's try to do that same thing with Earth's moon and see if we can get that to be habitable okay so here's Earth looking beautiful let's get its moon okay here's the moon Awesome, beautiful. So it will be cool to see all of these craters fill with water. So we're gonna kind of do the same thing. Random asteroid, launch, oh, 
Oh, no, 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 don't hit. Retry that. Launch into the moon. Okay, so now how big is the moon compared to Earth? in radius 27 percent so we should put 27 percent of the earth's ocean onto it okay so we're gonna make it 100 percent water and turn up its mass okay perfect so now it's a big ball of water and now we're gonna compare it to earth's ocean so if we want it 20 what was it 27 percent i think that's how big it's gonna be going onto the moon to fully cover it hopefully let's see how well that works i'm gonna play time and it looks like a lot of it is coming off again like the other one. Here it comes. And collision with the moon. Wow. Okay, so that immediately heated it all up. The moon has no atmosphere at all. Mars had a little atmosphere, so I wonder if it's even going to be able to keep the water on the surface. Or if it's just going to fly back out into space. Speed up time and see. Oh, it looks like the water. Yeah, the water left. Yeah, so we have zero water left. So I know how we can keep it on. We need a little bit of hydrogen to kind of hold the water on. That works. So we're going to launch a hydrogen asteroid into it and make a big ball of hydrogen. That should be big enough, I think. And we're going to launch that into the moon and see if that's going to help. Okay, here it comes. I don't know what it's shooting off. It's like the fumes of it. Okay, hydrogen asteroid. Did that add hydrogen? A tiny bit. That might be all we need though. So let's try another water launch into it. Okay, set it to 27% the Earth's ocean mass and launch it into the moon. Here we go. Here it comes. That looks bigger than the other one. That was pretty big. I swear, wait, I might have done that wrong. <laughs> I swear that was way bigger. Well, let's wait for it to cool down. It looks like the water's staying on it better. It's still in orbit, so that's a good sign. Okay, we have water on the moon now. Let's go. Um, it's starting to cool down. Our life likelihood is still at zero, unfortunately. Let's wait for it to cool down all the way and see if we can get any life likelihood on there. No. Okay, so it's been a while. So I do think that the temperature needs to be a little higher, and we do need a little bit of an atmosphere. So let's try just adding an atmosphere and see if that will put it in the habitable. So it has life on it. So let's do 27% of Earth's atmosphere. You can see that show up on there. It's a white atmosphere. And just from that, let's see if that did anything. Yes, that added 10.4% life likelihood. So there's a 10.4% chance that this planet or this moon has life on it. Okay, so let's see if we can get that any higher. I'm gonna make it not tidally locked anymore. So the Earth, or so the moon usually faces the same side to earth always but that's not good for life because you want a good day night cycle so we're gonna switch it to one day so it spins one day on the moon is the same as earth now and i bet that has an effect yes 23.5 that almost doubled the chance of life we're also going to increase the temperature to an average of 14 degrees celsius and we're gonna add some clouds and some other visual stuff to make this thing look better Beautiful. Check that out. That is the new moon. 24.1% chance of life. Okay, so that is good enough, I think, because the moon is a lot smaller. So the chance that life develops on it is still going to be lower. You can see we add vegetation. I don't like how it takes all of it and makes it vegetation, though. So I'm actually going to kind of do my own vegetation. I know. I mean, this isn't real vegetation. We're just kind of painting it green. But I think it looks better if you don't have it all green. So you can see here's kind of our surface now we have a big ocean here and then some continents over here that are a little bit green i think that contrast is up a little too high something like that looks a little bit better so we kind of have the big land continent over here and then the big ocean over here and it is still in orbit around the earth perfect okay Last one we're gonna do today is Venus, so let's get over to that. All right, here's Venus. Okay, Venus already has a thick atmosphere, so let's try to not touch its atmosphere and just add water and then maybe move it further away and see if that will give us life. So same thing, we're gonna go random asteroid and then launch it into Venus. And Venus is almost the same size as Earth. 90, what's our size? 95% the size of Earth. So we're gonna do 95% of Earth's ocean launching into it. All right, so this this ball here is 95% the mass of Earth's ocean, and we're going to launch it into Venus and see what happens. Fragments coming off. Here it comes. 
Wait, before we do, let's turn off Venus's atmosphere so we can see what's going to happen on the surface. Okay, collision. And what happens? It could be that the water is so hot, because Venus is so hot, that it doesn't exist in a liquid form on the surface. Yeah, so it's, it's showing that it does have water. So I think we need to move it further away. So we're going to move it a little bit behind Earth, be, just because its atmosphere is so thick that it can kind of heat itself. We're going to put it right here and then set our motion to auto orbit. Okay, and we'll see if this cools down enough over time to maybe make that water liquid. Oh, it looks like it's kind of working. We'll do a flashlight. So this isn't realistic lighting anymore, but we just want to kind of see it. Where is... Look, there's water, liquid water right there. So how do we get more liquid water? I'm going to try to settle it. Settle the water. Yeah, that kind of worked. Okay, so there's a little bit of water now, and let's also just cool it down, and then we'll see how it well it works. Okay, so it's still too close. It's heating up too fast still. Venus, you're going to need to be out here in the asteroid belt, it looks like. Okay, now is it heating up or cooling down? Still heating up. Venus, you... Oh, we're going to need to put you where? By... Okay, we're putting you between Jupiter and Saturn. There's no way you still heat up all the way out here. Okay, it's starting to cool down now. So let's put it at 14. It looks like it's very slowly slowing down. So this actually might work pretty well. Okay, and then it looks like we have one big ocean, so I'm going to try to settle the water again. It kind of... So we have a lot of little lakes, it looks like. Um, I mean, they'd be big lakes for us, but compared to the ocean... Like, this is our only, like, ocean on the surface. So it still does have its atmosphere and clouds. They're just... We just turn them off so we can see the surface. And, okay, with that, what's our life likelihood? 0.351%. Wow. Okay. I think we might actually have to make our atmosphere thinner because the pressure's just so much on it. Okay. If I set it to one Earth's atmosphere, it's going to be colder, but let's check its life like, yes, 22.4. And also let's make it so it rotates correctly. And now we get 65%. I'll take that. We made Mars habitable, the moon habitable, and Venus habitable by throwing oceans on it. And then I guess changing some of the settings. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave suggestions for more Universe Sandbox stuff down in the comments below. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching.